owners have lost an arbitration case against an employee because, well, you know, NFL owners, it's really a dictatorship over there. NFL owners are, I mean, it's great to be an NFL gonna, owner I'm because you, you just, this. you Our contracts coming up in June. You fool. <laughs> Colleen, Colleen, what, what was Kyle Brandt? What were you watching by the way? Um, what do you mean? What was I watching? What were you watching about article. NFL owners or whatever? There it's was a owner. Kyle Brandt. No. Oh, I was I was watching. Uh, what was he talking about? He was talking about the Colleen Wolf story. He did. Yeah. Okay. So the Colleen Wolf story. She was on around the league or around the around the NFL podcast. around the NFL podcast. It's with the guys are great guys, um, Dan Hansis and and Greg Rosenthal and the guys and and so she was on there. She was just talking. It's just a podcast. You don't think anything about it, right? Yeah, just a podcast. And she's talking about a story she heard where Woody Johnson was getting into it at the owners' meetings with uh, Robert Sala. And they had a heated exchange and blah, blah, blah. And she's telling it, and she's telling the story, and she goes into it multiple times. It's a third, it's another person who was there who was, you know, said it, it, it got very contentious. And she was saying this on there. Woody Johnson said, oh, uh, what a surprise, another lie by the NFL Network or another – more poor reporting by the NFL Network, blah, blah, blah. Irresponsible. Colleen, is that what I, he might have used the term irresponsible? Yeah, irresponsible. And he said, now, Colleen is somebody who has, by the way, her contract's up this summer. So these are scary things to do because it's the owners who own this and or they fund it, I guess. And so, uh, although it feels like there should just be whatever is part of Roger Goodell's, like it feels like the NFL should get. A certain amount. Well, I don't know. I don't know how it works. But anyway, Colleen had to come out, and I heard information wrong. It's my fault. I should have never said that. And I talked to somebody else at the network who loves Colleen and said, you know what? Whatever happens at the owners' meetings, that should be – that's off limits. You yeah. don't talk about what you see. Because I never really thought of it because I was just thinking, okay, I bet what Colleen saw or what she heard about was 100% accurate. And I still think it probably was. But this person made a very good point. They said – you don't – there's certain things to a reporter that you can't – like, this is off limits. Yeah. If that happened, you have it for your own background, but you don't talk about it on a podcast because what she probably thought is – because here's what happens. You could do something on NFL Network TV, and it might go under the radar. You do it on a podcast, and it's there for a lot of people to see, a lot of people to rewind, listen to again, say, hey, you got to hear this. Apparently so – and you don't think something about an um, owner – and uh, a head coach in New York is going to become a thing. So I understood, like, while Colleen may have been telling, you know, whoever her source was may have been telling the truth, it really is a pretty good point that you have to let cer certain things just have to stay quiet. And here's what she said in her apol apology. Regarding my comments surrounding the Jets on the Around the NFL podcast, no, I was not at the annual meeting. And, yes, I was told of the exchange between head coach Robert Sala and Woody Johnson by someone in attendance. Others on site Sunday night have since reached out and described the interaction differently. My intent was, wasn't to break news. I leave that to the insiders, so on and so forth. I apologize to the Jets, whatever. So she has not retracted. She just said, hey, someone else, so other people said it went differently. But she just said, sorry for the distraction, Jets. Go about your offseason. Yeah, that's tough. And, and you know what? She did break a rule. You've gotten in trouble for saying uh, stuff that you heard. I've gotten in trouble yep, for it before. Yep, yep, yep. It happens to all of us. That you it hear wasn't something. inaccurate either. No. It was accurate. It just. Exactly. Hey, you just got in trouble for telling it. Yeah, you got in trouble for telling or. Yeah, yeah. It's it's. Yeah. It's a difference of opinion on whether or not it should be public. Yes. And, and it doesn't matter yeah. because if the people telling you that say it's not. Well, what Colleen had was that's just journalistically. You got to you got to know. This isn't worth it. Yeah. Mine wasn't inaccurate either. I'm still, I, I still haven't, Jim Crane was none too pleased with me for a report that I had, but I, I stand behind it, but he didn't feel like it was. First of all, it was funny because I got a tweet from a head coach that said, why did you just do that? What's the, what's the point of doing what you When just you did, did it? Yeah. Oh, okay. When I did it. He said, what's the point of doing Can that? Can you bring up to me? Do you want to, you want to bring up what it was or no? No, I okay. just, no. It, I know what it was. Yeah, I don't know if it just it just is you know what what was the point of that? And I thought, well, it's just that's it's true. It's it happened, and you know what? 
You know, it just, it didn't, it, it wasn't, maybe he's right. Maybe it wasn't necessary and maybe it was, uh, actually, and actually I, I've told him, I told him, I said, I think you were right in your decision that you made, but I'm not, I'm, I'm going to stand behind what I said, but I think you were right in what you did. So it, it was probably unnecessary. And what Colleen did was probably unnecessary, probably might've been accurate, but what she did was unnecessary. Mm-hmm. Right. So certain things, not everything has to be yeah, told to the right, public. Exactly. Let's get Pete. And by the way, these things happen a lot, and you don't need to know how the sausage is made. Right. Sometimes there's yelling and screaming. It would be it would be a huge controversy. But coaches yelling and screaming at each other behind closed doors. You may have owners, you know, get into it with coaches. This is part of you have coaches and players. You know, I, I was I question whether or not I should have said this, but I in my long time ago when I had the Chronicle blog, Antonio Smith from the Texans was a rookie, not a rookie, I'm sorry. He was the free agent signing by the Texans. It was kind of a big deal. And he was there with Bill Kolar. Bill Kolar was a defensive line coach. And it was the first open practice to the to the fans. And I'm out there. Now, we used to be able to go a lot closer to the action. The media did. And actually, the fans were around there, too. And there were some fans. And it was, we were on, I was on the little track area. And I'm watching defensive line. And Antonio Smith, and Bill Kolar start getting into it, and Smith is cussing them out. And I wrote about him like, this is just terrible. It, when you have fan day and you are MFing your coach and you're a brand-new free agent and this is terrible, you shouldn't do this and that. And then I, I started thinking, I don't know if I should have, like, because there was the, the, the general fan base was out there too, you know, I'm not sure I should have said that or, or, if I, or if I was right for saying that the player who just came over a free agent was cussing out the D line coach, because that felt like something that like, you don't do that. But um, maybe that's something I shouldn't have said in the blog and reported that. Cause there was a lot of people back then that used to read Chronicle blogs and, and, you know, it became a, a little bit of a, a story behind the scenes with, with Texans fans, but maybe that's something I should have kept to myself too. Yep. I don't, I don't know. Cause those things happen in practices too. And it's just, he and Kolar got along after that. It's just, you know, grown men get into it sometime. Yep. Let's get uh, PJ in here. Hey, PJ. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, man. Hey, I, John, I thought you were dark meat. What are you talking about a win for Whitey for? No, well, I'm I'm, I'm not happy about it. You were rooting for <laughs> Iowa. No, I'm not happy that Whitey got the but win. But you were well, rooting. Listen, We've Wait. been we've been dominating Whitey, okay? So I don't want who's this we? we. Who's we? Don't rub your forearm. You started yesterday by saying you were rooting for Caitlin. I was your rooting ties. for Caitlin. So you so you're it's rooting about for Whitey. Time Whitey got a win around here. You just flip flop in the same <laughs> minute. What are you talking about? You just said you just were unhappy. Now you're happy about. Who guarded her most can, of the game? Listen, Whitey. Well, uh, that's a problem. So was it a win, well, John? It wasn't really. And a blonde haired girl too. Well, you one step a forward, Haley. two steps back. Van Liff really, <laughs> really did Whitey on in last night. So, okay. what side are you on again? Stop rubbing your forearm. So, your words say you're happy, but Do you pick you're, a team. Pick a how about side a team already? that actually is? You're uh, not picking their skin color, their jer- How about a jersey color? You used listen, to be an LSU fan. Listen, it is a bad night for Juju. Bad night for Angel. Bad night for me. Bad God. night. Bad <laughs> night for us. You're flip flopping. Bad, bad night. Bad night for, bad night for, for the cause. Uh, us. What cause? <laughs> what PJ, cause? see what you started. <laughs> what cause? Nice it's job, TJ. PJ. See what you started. Oh, PJ? This is I'm TJ. A, I'm, I'm gonna talk about what I really called for. I get you guys thought about it. As a side note, uh, the Houston Astros have six no hitters since 2019, including the postseason. No other team has more than two in that span. Uh, do the Astros? Uh, out and pitching coaches get enough credit or is it more on the players i hang up and let you guys talk about that uh you know i don't know about the credit i don't see i think no hitter is just i, I don't know I, I don't put as much stock into no i mean it's a dominant dominant night but you know if the next night you gave up five in in three innings then i you know i don't know I don't know. Do they not get enough? They're pretty damn good. I know Stromy got all kinds of credit, and he was uh, uh, absolutely a part of all that. And these guys are pretty damn good. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know about the cre- the whole credit thing. 
And is Yiner getting too much credit because he called a no hit? I don't know. Well, he's like, well, I don't know. no. I mean, I mean, we people gotta, who want to make yeah. it a Yiner thing, but the guy making the pitches is who gets the yeah. credit. And he had a dominant night. I, I've always been no hitters are great, but it's just that you, you were just great that night. I don't know that that's a career. No, it's not. Mike Fires has a no hitter. Yeah, right. it used to be only the greatest pitchers. No, usually, no. Now it's really turned into. But six no hit. Can we name the six no hitters since nineteen? Let's uh, well Verlander, Fires. Oh no, Fires. No, wasn't Fires in there. Verlander, you had the World Series the, no hitter. The, you had this. Did you have the? When was the six in nineteen? No, that was well before. No, that, that was no. a long time ago. But you had another one. You've had more than man. Fromber's not been part of one. Javier's been part of one. Yeah. Uh, Verlander two or one. Verlander's two, right? Verlander's one in Toronto. That was the only one? That was the only one, I think. How are we forgetting if there's six since 2019? I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. That was my first I've ever seen live. First time I've seen first a no-hitter. First no-hitter. I've yeah. never seen a no-hitter live. You've got to talk about QC. what a view you had. I did. I had a nice view. You saw it. I'll yeah. talk about QC Kinetics. wanted to talk about a nice view. How about some of you would say, man, I'd love to go to a I'd love to go to a baseball game, but I can't park far away and make that walk. I, I can't even think about walking you know, three quarters of a mile somewhere. I can't go to, to football games and park way away and have to walk because my knee or my hip. Do you know that I know that your thought is you're going to have to get a get a surgery at some point, but did you know you know how many people benefit from regenerative medicine? Regenerative medicine, what it does is it, it takes the body's healing power, they concentrate it, they put it back into the joint, and all this inflammation starts to leave because it regenerates and restores damaged tissue. Your inflammation goes down, and your mobility goes up. And before you know it, you're not living with that chronic pain anymore. In your hips, in your in your back, in your shoulders, wherever you're, in your knee, wherever your chronic pain is, you start to see, um, you start to see a big difference. And I know it happened with my wife when she was preparing to run a marathon. I know it's going to happen for a lot of you where you get better. I've heard from people who have gone to QC Kinetics, and it's been a life-changing experience in terms of reducing that chronic pain. You don't have to just get steroid shots and surgeries and have all the downtime and, and the drugs you have to use to, to manage pain. There is a better way, and it's QC Kinetics. Four locations near you here in the Houston area, qckinetics.com.
You're back in the Veritex Community Bank Studios with John and Lance. On ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. You screwed it up. You screwed it up. Oh, we had a, we had a great guest, uh, and Lance screwed it up by not remembering. Um, by yeah, the way. Yeah, yesterday I got all hyped up, and I'm like, oh. Well, no, it wasn't on me. I texted Dell we needed to do it. He uh, didn't say did it you, either. When did you text me? I said, texted John and Dell. When? In the group text. When did you on do it? On Sunday or Saturday. Let's see. Let's let because there's, look. there's it's a on ca- there. There's accounting for it because if you texted before the weekend, you I can't did. blame either one of us. I did. Fromber did have one just last year. Yeah. I don't remember these things. I don't. I have no idea. You texted us. Yeah, on Sunday, said that Craig Ackerman was going to be with us at eight thirty on Monday. I did on Friday. And I told you he that. did it on Friday. I did it on Friday. Craig Ackerman Monday. You can't at text before the weekend. Yeah. Well, the producer re- should have known that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I wasn't even looking at it. I don't respond to his text after work you on a Friday. You need to look at this. This is a work-related issue. I texted not both a, of you, not moron. On a, not, on, not on a Friday well, after work. You guys are a couple guess. of bozos. Not you're on a Friday after guess. work. You're supposed I, to... I, I can't remember anything. You guys are bozos. Why would you do that on a Friday The Friday before the yeah. week? I can't remember that Frommer threw a no-hitter last year. This is on you. I know, I know you yeah, don't have a very busy this life. This is on you. This but you Delphal. text ever since. You know what, Dell? Before the <laughs> show, ever before since, he had his own show, here we go. Ever would since, remember that. Yeah. Go ahead. But with Dell, the now that he has his show, like, oh, no. I don't know anything. You texted it too early. Probably gonna have Craig Ackerman on his show now. Nah. I mean, I don't waiting want, to see if he answers the text. He's not asleep. answering, is he? <laughs> texted a, a Friday at like two p.m. Who's gonna remember that? Just yeah. put it in your calendar, wherever your your producing calendar is. I got other things in my calendar. Yeah, see, that's what other producers have. That no, it's the neighbor. I the, got her. I got her pinned in. The big the news. Weekend. The big news yesterday was uh, Astros no hitter Renell Blanco. It was about getting a win for Joe Espada, which was nice, and it was about an explosion of runs. I know we're talking Yiner's two home runs. But what about Kyle Tucker's two home runs? What about that? Um, Big night for Whitey. Let's hear. I gotta know what. Ha- oh, oh, thank bl- you. oh, yeah, your black church story. Thank you, black Nick, for reminding story. us. Thank you, Nick. You hit us with that yesterday. At the end of the show. At the end of the show at eight fifty-seven. Oh, church. it reminds me of the black church I went to yesterday. Like, what? Oh, Nick hung up. Oh, black church on it, Easter. Tell it anyway. He just yeah. wanted to remind us. Okay. What? what? Just tell us. Just tell us. The black no, church hold on. Story. Hold on. The first question is. How did you end up at the Black Church? On okay, Dell will interview. I just, I, I, just, come on. How did that work I, out? Okay, Your Honor, I just went I, and I looked at Google not churches, witch. Catholic churches near me, and you, and you somehow found the and Black. This was yeah, a Catholic church. We were. You don't have a permanent church you go to anymore. In Austin? Oh, you're in Austin. Oh, you're okay. in Austin. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so that's part of the story. Yeah, yeah. You're in Austin. I was in Austin, and yeah, I found a church. I just, so we went. And there were a couple of white people walking in with us. And you're like, this is fine. No, I didn't say this is fine. I just we'll be like, okay I here. did notice. You guys like, and then we opened are the you door. Are you Caitlin Clark fans? Did you ask him that? With us and that couple were the only white people there. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, and then. So you went to a black church by accident. Now that's, is this starting to make sense? Of course. It okay. makes more sense. And no, I would have gone regardless. It was the closest to Catholic church. Do you? Do you Google? I didn't. I didn't Google white Catholic of church. Course, of course not. But do you randomly show up at a black church in town? No, you have a permanent church. So well, you, I you're go, out of town. I, I and, actually don't go to Catholic church anymore. Okay. But the one that I did go to was the closest one to my house was a white he Catholic church. He figured it was safe to say Catholic church. I just said, yeah, I've never. I wouldn't know. I just the Catholic churches oh, that I go to uh, here. You're being a hostile witness. Bef- beyond. Beyond walking in and looking at the demographics and going, oh, this is different. When you said, what did you say to Wendy? When did you initially didn't realize? didn't say anything to Wendy. We just re- sat down. Did, did you, you give each other a look? No, we didn't. Give each other a look. <laughs> did you say, man. No, but when I sat down. Sure and I are a lot of down. LSU women's basketball fans in here and not as many Caitlin Clark fans. Did you speak in code like that? No, I actually knelt down and to say the prayer before church started. And, and what I did looked you pray up at the for? cross and I said, well, here he looks that Jesus looks different than the one. <laughs> then so, my Jesus, on say San my Fa- Jesus, on say it. San Felipe. So that's it. So that's when you realize you're in for a different well, experience. Yes. No, he and knew then, when he walked in. No, yeah, we, did, yeah, you know, it was. Yeah, but when course. you knelt down to pray, you looked up and what did you see? I saw black Jesus on the okay. on the cross. How many black Jesus Jesuses were visible? Uh, three. 
or four. Did they get progressive? Well, behind the altar, there was uh, – I don't. I'm not sure who they all were. Did they have? But mi- they were. It was. A, it was a depiction of, of black, and one of them I would imagine was Jesus. And Peter, Paul, the disciples. Yeah, black? Yeah, maybe. Were maybe. the disciples black? I guess. Was Mary black? I don't know. Nah, um, I don't remember that. No. Did no. they have the the stations of the cross with they all did black not. Jesus they on had, stations of the it, cross? It was just uh, stained glass. How long was no the black? Now I've heard. Cross. Now I've never been to a black church. I've always wanted to go. But I've heard that it is, except for this. Yeah. I've heard that it is a there was long. There's a lot of this going on. In, yeah. In of some of the and uh, a lot of and the, also with the you. regular so not, prayers that you do. Yeah. There was singing as opposed to just the regular prayers. Was there? Um, so there was a lot of there was more singing. There was more. Yeah. You got into it. Well, there was more seasoning in the singing. There was. And it was yes, and it was yes. It was a lot more rhythmic. Yep. Yes. Was there? Instruments and, played. Yes, there was an organ, and 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 he led. The, the, there was a sermon that was a lot longer than usual. Did the yeah. did that, the that's what's keeping did me. Did the out. minister go? Wow! Did he ever do that at no. any point? <laughs> he never did that. <laughs> Wait, do what now? <laughs> you you gotta go to a black church to understand, because there are times at a black church when you know it's about to go down, yeah. and the minister will start elongating his words and dragging out things because he's feeling it quote unquote the Holy Spirit is inside of him. I don't know if that's the thing at Catholic Church, it's the Holy Spirit inside you. You don't do you guys I, have that? I didn't get that. I did get some amens. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Some amens. Did, Amen, brother. Did you get a black church dinner or do they not do that in the I Catholic Church? Well here's the deal. His, this it is was, Easter now. It was yeah, it was a, it was a, an hour and a half in and we'd already gone to communion and I thought, you know, at a cat at, at normal church, well the normal church I'm used to, after it's, you know, everybody sit down, stand up. Maybe there's a couple of announcements of what's going on in the church that week. Well, there was a lot more than oh, that. Yeah. A lot more than that. And we were start. Then it was, okay, who's new to this church? And all the white people stood up. <laughs> who's were the first all, time you were they all You had to. Yes. Were they all, we to. did. We stood up. You were they all had visiting? To. Because they asked, okay, who's the, the first time? Is Who's the first timer here? So we stood up and most all the white people did <laughs> And uh, did you they, hear that? Did you hear people do this? Mm. Mm. No, <laughs> I didn't hear that. I did. They did come around and they gave us paraphernalia for the church, and we want you to come back. And this is you if you live in paraphernalia for the church. Yeah. Oh, like pamphlets. Oh. And, yeah. I thought you got like a hat. I thought you got swag. No, that's memorabilia. No, no, yeah. no, no. Uh, and then, and then we sat back down. And then there was more talking. Yeah. And then there was a, an introduction of, here comes sister. She's going to come up now and talk. And then we said, okay, yeah, that's, that's our exit. This is tough to Did, you, did yeah. you make it noticeable that you left? Did people well, notice we, you walking we out? We were the only ones that stood up and walked out. Wow. Yeah. The disrespect. Yeah. Mm. No, mm. it was time. It was no, 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 no. You insulted him a little bit. You got a little out of order. You insulted sister, but I no. put my. I already did mine. Sister came up and was about to speak, and you walked out. Yeah. You walked out when a black woman was about well, to speak. Walking, Ooh, well, she had a long wow. walk. But she had a long walk from where she was sitting, so I don't know if she noticed us. Mm, yeah. That's wow. disrespectful. No, that's not. Did you not leave and say, "I got to go home and get ready for Caitlin Clark"? <laughs> Dude, not. Did you say I that? I said for Angel Reese. Oh, no, you didn't. Smart. Angel Reese is coming on. And I don't think this mass is ending before then. Well, look at what somebody said. At least with John there, communion wasn't the only cracker there. <laughs> Astro egg. Time to talk about tequila, okay? Uh, I, okay? Bring, it, bring good, in that good. wine. Maestro do Bell. No, that's not in the communion you don't have. Now, it'd be a smooth sip, I got to tell you. But uh, let me talk about the, the silver. The silver is what I would call their standard tequila, but it's so much more than whatever you're thinking. I know a lot of your tequilas you use, like this is what we use for our, our, our margaritas, and I have a shot of this whenever I want a pregame, and uh, it's that tequila burn that you get. Do you know if you have the tequila burn, you're drinking a cheap tequila, you're drinking a tequila that's not distilled properly? If you are drinking a Maestro de Bell, you're not going to have that if you do a shot. But then again, Maestro de Bell is a really nice tequila. You don't want to just sit around doing shots with it. You can if you want. It's your Hey, it's your bottle. You're the one buying it. It's your bottle. But it's great for margaritas. It's, it's great for cocktails. It's just Maestro de Bell is great for any time. And they want to make sure that you understand they are going to give you a bottle that is that has a lot of love put into it. And the difference is 
something that you can taste right away. Right away with slightly sweeter finish, but there's a variety of tequilas to choose from. Wherever fine liquors are sold, you're going to find a bottle of Maestro de Bell. Buy it, take a picture of it, send it to me, and let me know how you like it. It's Maestro de Bell. You are listening to Houston's longest-running sports radio morning show. From the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's John and Lance. All right, welcome back here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. So, uh, this Alperin Shangun thing, it got out of uh, hand a little bit. Over the uh, weekend, who was it that was talking about... uh, that the Rockets are going to make a trade? Probably Dell. Del, it was Dell, I'm sure. Over the weekend I did this? Um, on the, oh, Tim Tim Bontemps? Oh. Yeah, yeah, from ESPN. Yeah. He said, they've got to be careful. Let's get an impact player and become the seventh seed or sixth seed or fifth seed and end up 12th. It, it is that there is a belief that there that is the going to be still... a, a big trade, and one of the, one of them, Alpi or Jalen Green, is it won't be, be Alpi. It's not going to be. I mean, it's so much easier to find an explosive wing than a well-rounded post who can do like. It's hard to find the Alperin Shingoons. Let's be real; it's not the hardest thing to find an explosive score to. Tim McMahon said this: there are questions about how much Jalen Green taken off is about the floor opening up because everything is not running through Alperin Shangun. 
let me be very clear. Those questions, questions hearing from other teams, I'm not hearing those internally from the Rockets, apparently. I don't yeah, think you will. I don't think you will either. But the thing is, the Rockets, one of the things that makes the Rockets, I mean, the Rockets have beaten the Nuggets, what, three times? There's a reason. Alperin Shingun. Alperin Shingun played whenever they beat the the Spurs. Not not in this last one, but let's not get it twisted here. Yeah. Alperin Shingun, what you're seeing him do, there's there's not a lot of guys who can do that. And the guys who do do it are considered MVP front runners. So, Joel Embiid, right. Jokic. Like there's not many guys who can do that. Honestly, what I mean, he's not a great shooter. Jalen Green. He's an explosive scorer who has not shown a consistency yet for three years. There's a lot of things you can like about him, but if you're going to trade one of those, it's way easier to find a Jalen than an Alper. Tim McMahon says they're trying to fast forward to phase three. They absolutely want to take a big, big swing at the trade market sooner than later. I don't know if both Alper and Shengun and Jalen Green will be around long term. No, I, If both, correct. You you, you but, believe that too, right? I, I, I believe that Jalen gets traded this. It's not... Nothing changes for me. Whatever happens this well, year. Well, look at how it's changed. The, the the league is changing though, with Jokic, with Embiid, with Shingun, with the final four teams. Uh -huh. Look at the big man. It is different now. And now, I really do believe versatile big men. Yes. Yeah. But I do believe the addition, um, which he's not playing, Stephen Adams is 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 a is a move in that direction in that you get you can that Alpi is not going to be the big man that's going to be defending night in and night out. Okay. Alpi is more than likely going to be guy. the offensive yeah. side and you run through him I even with Steven gonna... Adams on the floor. But right now this team the way it's playing last game notwithstanding it seems like being open up and uh, opened up in the middle it yeah, would, it helps him. is almost you know better but for this him. is but this is the thing this is probably not the right scheme for him with Alperin Shingun. let's just be honest about it he's not a catch and shoot three point score he's not he needs that space he's at his best when he's attacking the rim either you can play that level of basketball with Alperin Shingun there or if you can't then you probably need to go to for the betterment of your career you need to go to another team where they run something that's more yeah. exterior based and you can do some one four stuff. You can like but it's it the gives league you a turning chance. into a center league again. No, there's no. just very if you have one that's special, you can do it. And but Joel, it's not the, the difference between them, the, the guys you're mentioning, and Alperin Shagoon simply hasn't had the opportunity yet. Is you can't play Jokic off the floor in the playoffs. You can't play Embiid off the floor. Not but only why because not, not only because of their offensive efficiency, but Jokic isn't defended. Embiid is, but Embiid is a legitimate elite defender. Shagoon, we don't. We know that there are some limitations there. We don't know what he'll be three or four years from now on that end. And that's but he the, can't get played off the floor. That's, not not realistic. That, the question is, is his offensive efficiency good enough that when he's attacked over and over again in playoff scenarios, will it will it not matter because he's too good on the other well, end? So far, the answer is yes. We don't, but they well, also we don't know that the because they've never been the that's, that's yeah, how been, started but the but conversation. From an efficiency standpoint, he's very efficient. But sometimes you're just going to have a guy who's a minus defender. Sure. Who's a plus plus offensive player. But are they player. going to? I mean, that's the oldest. That's it's fine. that's like a tight end that can't block at all. Like Travis Kelsey's not much of a blocker, but and in basketball, it's like there have been great scores. Dominique was not a great defender. Larry Bird was not a great defender. You have guys right now in 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 basketball who are not great defenders. And it doesn't matter because they're that good. Well, they're offensive. MVP candidates, and Shingun, beyond the fact that his team's never been good enough for him to be qualify, he, he's still in that twenty point per game range. Embiid's a thirty was scoring more points than he was playing minutes. We know what Jokic is, so and he'll shoot more threes that's too. How, well, you have to hope that's the balance. So, and, and they're twenty two years old, so that's not really a question of now. He's nowhere near his prime, and that's what the Rockets have to project. If he's if he's when he's 25, 26, is he an MVP candidate? And will his defensive limitations be limited enough that it doesn't matter because he's so good, he's such a hub, and that's what they have to balance. So I don't know what decisions can be made. I wouldn't even I don't, wouldn't even make a real decision as far as those who are concerned until after the season as far as who well, am I well, trading. Well, that's what, yeah. No, next season. Until who oh, am I trading? But the positive is that you could actually sign guys and deal. Like, you'll be able to trade Jalen Green. You don't want to give him a max deal if you don't have to. Because that makes it a little bit harder to trade, just matching, you know, matching money. 
But Jalen Green is a guy that even if you gave him a contract, if he's playing well, him playing well right now is is really a big deal because it makes it easier yeah. to deal him possibly. So you could see if these guys can play together at a high level. Again, I mean, you've had you've had two years to see it. And, or no, he was in the same draft. You've had three years to see it. If you still don't have your answer and you need to go into a fourth year, I guess, then you could do that and still deal Jalen, but you're well, not going to. Allegedly, the organization had Jalen out on the trade block for Bridges, right? Allegedly, that's the that's what that's what was said. This will make it much easier. Well, Sham with the said way it he's too. So, well, yeah. and then it, legit. you yeah. mentioned Tim McMahon. He pushed back in on that a little bit, at least from the Rockets side. He was talking to Zach Lowe about that particular. He didn't mention Sean's by name, but the reporting and said that. The Rockets asked the Nets about Mikael Bridges, but the Nets were so forthright and like upfront about, no, we're not making any trades that they didn't even get the players. That's what the Rockets are saying because, yep. of course, they don't want it out there that no, they're trying no, to trade. No, they don't want Jalen to think that he was on the trade block. Yeah. Absolutely. Especially the way he's playing now. All right, 9 o'clock, 713-780-3776. Ryan wants to talk about the Astros. Anybody else wants to get in? How about that no-hitter? Let's go. HRP is what we're talking about right now. HRP is where you go and get your – you, you, you get your payroll on, okay? You don't know about payroll. I've been saying this. I mean, if you've got a, a company that's growing and all of a sudden now, you know, the payroll needs are are, are getting out of control right now. It's, uh, your, your payroll department can't handle it or you're starting to add new people into your payroll department. I mean, I, I, I don't know what our number of employees is here, but it grew to 75 in that neighborhood. And we never had more than one person in there, Laura. And here's why is because HRMP takes care of all of that for you. HRMP is going to save you money with, the, as I said, the, the scam by these admin companies is that, oh, no, 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 that company charges you more than payroll from payroll than we do. Yeah, but then they make up for it with ridiculous 401k plans that they're making money off of or insurance that they're making money off of. And, and, and HRMP is not doing that. HRMP is delivering your HR and they're delivering your payroll and they're not in that business. What they do is they offer you, uh, they're going to help you out with that 401k and they're going to offer you suggestions, but they don't make money off of that. That's not, that's not their business. Their business is payroll and they do it perfectly every time for us. They'll do it perfectly every time for you, HR as well. And your taxes, man, they're good. They're really, really good. So you need HRMP. And if you do, and if you're not completely satisfied with the payroll company you have, or if your payroll company is, to, is just growing too much and it's getting too expensive, hrp.net, 281-880-6525 or hrp.net.
Pims, you'll get a free medical. can truly say that I've been blessed. I've got a testimony. I feel all right, y'all. Won't the Lord do it? Won't he do it? Won't he fight your battles? Won't he make your enemies your footstool? This Won't he not. give you joy in This is what you heard? This Won't he give you hope for tomorrow? Then you weren't at a black church. Your tears? Won't he, won't he, won't no. he, won't he, won't he? Won't he, won't he, won't he? Somebody say yeah, say yeah, somebody scream, somebody shout, because he's able to pick you up. I know I'm qualified, infection on my throat, got down in my Did that sound like what it was, John? Uh, that did not sound. Did you catch the Holy Ghost? I did catch, I did catch the Holy Ghost, but I didn't catch it that way. I caught it, um. I, it was actually I had a nice time. I'm sure it was, you a, did. It was a good match. Black churches are fun. I grew up going to black churches, and as soon as this happened, and it happens almost all the time at the end of the the the, uh, the, the sermon, and I just tune out because if everyone's doing it at the same time, this is performative. Every every minister is doing the same thing at the same time at the end of the sermon. You all get caught up with that and start doing this. I'm out. Well, I'm out. Well, this is the culminate. It's called a crescendo, though. There, it's the crescendo towards I, the end of the service. I understand, but he's putting on a show, and if well, they, yeah. and if they're all doing the same thing, come on. Are you gonna tie and pay up for a, a a super boring one? No. You gonna come up out the pocket a little bit harder for somebody he's putting on a show? This is a different guy, by the way. It's been rough for you. I see you in the spirit, but the devil is a lie. I'm talking to some prayer warriors. You've been praying, but look like ain't nothing happening. <laughs> but the devil is a lie. This is, this is a compilation of the best sermon closings from great preachers, and they all sound the same way. Well, you, better, you better get out of my face. It's it's tried and true. Tried and true, Del. Yeah, tried and true. Okay. Putting on a show. No. Yeah, you have to put on a show. No, you don't. Put on the show. No, you yes, don't. you do. No, you don't. You do. If you want to, like I said, let me tell you something. Those suits don't pay for themselves. Okay. Oh, you got to put on oh, a little bit of a oh. show. See? Look what, look now, what he's look doing. At, Catholic, look at, the Catholic Church, it's just you wear your vestments and you wear your, it's not, it's pretty much, and it's not, let me tell you, it's not always exciting. Have you ever heard a Catholic priest, well, until the other day, do anything like that? He's no. a bright in the morning star. I'm just He's clicking different shower. parts of the 17 minute Ooh, video, and it's the same thing. It's not that. No, it's not that. I learned very early. No, that's not getting anyone paid. I've, I've learned very early. When this started, we're wrapping it up. And make it quick, please. I'll just tell you. I got football to go home and watch. Yeah, I mean, I can't. We yeah. can't do 90 minutes plus. It's just not. That's just not tenable. Uh, let's can't get, do that. Let's get Ryan in here. Look that's not everyone. how it sounded. That's not how it sounded. Oh, it. well. Then, it didn't sound like that. <laughs> then you need a real experience. <laughs> What's up, Ryan? Hey, good morning, my snitches. <laughs> what's, uh, what's going on? Hey, I want to say, Johnny G, uh, man, I appreciate you speaking all out for Whitey and being a face of the cause. Is this That's what cool, you want? Man. I really appreciate that. Uh, and uh, I want to talk about the no-hitter last night. And it's a little dangerous. bit more special because it was a complete no-hitter, not a combined no-hitter. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think a one-man no-hitter is better, yes. Yeah, because you got to get through the fatigue. Yeah. No, no, no. It is definitely a, a greater achievement than a six man. Yeah, I mean, when you got to come in for one inning and get three outs and you didn't give up a hit, uh, okay. Six guys, compl you know, get, completing a no hitter is eh, a one man no hitter is much better. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Chris wants to talk about my experience <laughs> at the Black Church. What do you say, Chris? <laughs> No, listen, I wasn't going to call in. I was sitting here cracking up. So this past weekend, I'm watching uh, TV. My wife's out with her friends, and I got the kids. 
and Tropic Thunder comes on. And as you guys are talking about this, no. I'm wondering if you went Robert Downey Jr. on us. And if you guys remember the scene where the actual black guy in that movie confronts Robert Downey Jr. acting like the black guy, if you guys can find that, it's hilarious. But that, that's what it made me think of as John possibly trying to – picturing John trying to fit in with the crowd and maybe move like some of the folks move. Uh, anyway, it just it cracked me up sitting here listening to you guys talk about it. I'll hang up and listen. Thanks. Yeah, we had a, a, a thing that took us a break for a while where he goes – we people and the black guy goes, What do you mean, we people? That's from Tropic Thunder. Oh, it is. Uh, or you people, whatever it was. Yeah. I like it. I like how the caller act like that's brand new. He rubs his he acts he rubs his forearm. Just earlier today, he just said it was a tough day for him and Angel Reese and Flage and Juju Watkins. <laughs> he, he he uses that all what are you talking about? I wonder if it if anyone's ever called he does that all the time. Now, he didn't do it in that church, I bet. I bet you he didn't. John Who are you texting? Who are you texting, Nothing. John? Nothing. I've got a problem. That's all. Um, I know. I've got a you problem. you got some big problems. i got some big problems. Uh, I don't. I, I didn't act like Robert Downey Jr. I didn't fa- paint my face black. None of that. Okay? I didn't do any of those things. Okay? <laughs> you didn't do that to go to church? No. I didn't do that to go to church. <laughs> Mark has an experience at a black church. Hey, Mark. <laughs> Hey, good morning, guys. Uh, so some years ago, I was working with a community group to pass a school bond election. So I was going out talking to civic clubs and things like that, trying to get out the vote. And a friend of mine said, hey, you need to come talk to my church on Sunday. So I went, showed up, and he was an African-American guy. So I go to church, and they usher me in. They sent me right down in the front. Pastor starts up the service and says, we got someone here, a special guest today. So they invite me up. I talk about the bond election. Everybody needs to get out and vote, support our kids. So I can't just leave right after that, you know. So I sit down in the front, so we'll go through the service, and along comes the time for pass a collection plate. So I, I, I'm right there in the front. They pass the collection plate to me, so I dig in, you know, and I, I hit the plate pretty hard. So the plate makes its way through the congregation. It gets back to the front. The pastor looks down the collection plate and goes, oh, no, 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 no. This is not going to work here. Brothers, they pass the collection <laughs> plate around three times. <laughs> the third time I'm putting I put in pocket lint, I put change, I put a peppermint in there, I'm running out. So afterwards my, my buddy goes, Man, I forgot to tell you, you gotta go light on the first couple of passes when they pass the collection play around. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to share oh, that with no, you. No, 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 <laughs> no. It was uh, it was something else. Yeah. <laughs> well, they did have a couple of collections. Oh, heads. yeah. Yeah. yeah not, I didn't realize that was going to happen. But they do that at, at, yeah. at all the churches. First collections for this, front, next collection. And for you them. know what? The second collection always gets ripped off. Always, always, always. It's way more in the first collection. Why don't they just do the Venmo thing? Hey, the church's Venmo is this. You wouldn't, can. That be, wouldn't that they be easier? You for can. People? At this point, it's performative to give. Yeah. Because you can they, actually do I, stuff online. But then if people don't know, like, don't you feel sometimes when you grab the plate, you grab the Labasque and you're like, I actually I, do a monthly. I, I do it I, online. I, before you hand it to somebody, I do a monthly thing online. So I <laughs> I actually give way no, more. No, I than don't most, do that. I give way more than this five that some people. So yeah, I don't, don't want look you to think negative way. of yeah. me. But yeah, well, <laughs> I always give cash. You're a cash and guy. And my, yeah. the guy, you know, does it, hey, um. You got any proof that you gave this much to the church? What? No, I give cash. Yeah, you don't. Uh, For taxes. Oh, okay. And I'm like, no, I got no, I give cash. He goes, ah, it's. You write checks, you you got it. Okay, can can you please get some kind of way? Because we have to tell the government that you gave Yeah, you're a dying breed. Do we have some proof? You 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 still live a cash life. You're a dying breed. Yeah. Well, I will say this. They brought up a lot of cash on Sunday to the, to it the is front. Easter, it is Easter the Sunday. The big basket was getting filled up now with those with those little baskets. Look, I, I, I know the experience. Yeah. I've, I don't think I've ever been in a place where they passed it around a second time because they were unhappy with the first one. I haven't been I've in one of those that. places. <laughs> they just say, hey, hey, what are you guys doing? Let's pick it up. Here. No, 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 no. I've never heard of that. Oh, uh-uh. Uh, no, uh, we're not going to. What we're not doing is this soft-ass first pass. <laughs> Let's uh okay, let's take a break. Roz, we're gonna get you on the other side. We'll get back to Astros baseball as they win their first game. Ten nothing with a no hitter. Right now it's give me the vin dot time give me the vin dot com time. 
Give me the Vin.com time. That's uh, not easy to say. What I'm saying is John Clay Wolf's going to buy your car. John Clay Wolf's going to give you more for your car. John Clay Wolf says it's a piece of metal. Why? Okay, it does maybe has some sentimental value for you. Or if you're going to, you know, you're selling it to your kids or your nephew or niece or your neighbor who needs the car and you want to take some money off, that's fine. That's nice. That's nice of you. You want to get less for your vehicle? Okay. But other than that, why? Why would you get take less for your vehicle? Why would you, you know, just, oh, that's fine. I'll just take that amount of money. No, no. Go in, if you're going to sell it to the dealership, go into the dealership know, knowing what you can get for it. And if the dealership is way short of what John Clay Wolf is selling for, hey, listen, I'm going to go through John Clay Wolf, but he's going to go through the dealership too. So all the taxes for the new vehicle that you're buying, are, it's all copacetic. It's all easy. And John Clay Wolf will do that, okay? But he also, listen, he says this, I, when, I, I'm going to buy your car. I'm going to show up at your doorstep with a check right away. I'm going to give you that money now. You're going to get that money now. So you want to sell your car, do it the easiest way and do it where you're going to get the most for it, and that's GiveMeTheVin.com. You are listening to Houston's longest-running sports radio morning show. From the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's John and Lance. Big night for our team last night. No hitter. A couple homers from Yiner. A couple homers from Kyle Tucker. Man, we really, really... Okay. How about Jake? Uh, how about Jake? Yeah. Um, how about the fact that Jake, Jake is getting... Every time Jake even gets a hit, I get... Immediately, I get yes. tweets about, is your dad doing okay? Right. Stuff like that. J no, Jake looks good. Okay. Through five games of the season, what concerns you most? Ah, it's too early for me to be concerned about anything. I just I just want to see probably the um, – it's probably Fromber and a little bit – like Fromber you have to depend on. Fromber and Presley – their performance is is concerns me a little bit. Middle relief is, you know, I think Presley will probably work it out. Here's the deal with Presley, though. Listen, when Presley had a three-run lead going into the ninth inning, he was almost going to surely give up two. Yeah, he had he, a lot of Presley have, saves. He did, he, did not have, he, he did not have a lot of clean innings when right, he, he had, had multiple. He had Presley saves for sure. When he had a one-run lead, 
I mean, maybe he get a runner or two on, but for the most part, he he got through it. Maybe this new role, he's not nearly as focused as he was as, you know, a guy who had to come in and put out the fire right now. Yeah. This is a lot less, I don't know, I don't want to say stressful because the big league, you know, getting big big league hitters out and even in the fourth or fifth or seventh inning, whatever the, the case may be, it's not the same as when the game is on the line in the ninth inning. It's just not the same. And maybe his focus isn't isn't nearly as good when he's not the guy. That was the case with – It was, wasn't was that the case with – who punched himself in the face? Um, oh, Ken, Ken Giles. Giles yeah. Ken Giles. Who punched himself in the face? <laughs> Ken Giles. He it was the same with him. Yeah. If, if it wasn't a save situation, Ken Giles was not nearly as good. So that that is something we have to watch this year. Maybe Presley isn't going to be the same guy coming in in the seventh that he is in the, in the ninth. That's a possibility. But he's been there before. He's been an eight. He's been a setup man and been fine. Fromber was not the same guy last year. Fromber is the one probably that really concerns me because this this issue with walking, because it happened early in his career. Then he had a nice run, and then it, last year it wasn't quite the same in the second half of the year. and just didn't seem like the same Fromber despite the no-hitter. And so, yeah, um, I would say the Fromber stuff is – like I, it's too early to be concerned pretty much about anything, but except unless there's leftover stuff from last year, and Fromber's leftover, and that's what bothers me a little bit. Kyle Tucker was leftover, you know, for his postseason. But he's got a long run, extended run. Yes, I'm less. Well, Fromber's really, got a nice run too. But he had a good. He had a really good year. Fromber had a. Fromber was a, a twelve and eleven last year after seventeen and six and eleven and six. Yeah, Fromber is decent. Fromber had a three four five, which is his highest since two thousand. And what about the whip? Two thousand twenty. Did the whip hit one two last year for him or no? The whip last year walks and hits per nine inning and pitch. Innings whip. pitched is down here. It was like a one nine. Well, one his nine. whip was two oh eight. No, his whip was two oh eight last year. No, that's not right. Oh no 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 no. That's, that's it's, it's point. No last. No. Two thousand twenty three was postseason. That was his postseason. Yeah. Uh, expanded pitching. His whip. I don't, I don't know. You just got to get out of the postseason and go to the regular season. Yeah. It's a, it's a drop down up at the top. But anyway, I, I want to say it's like 1.19, somewhere around there. And that's that's really because he's putting too many men on base with the walks. I love the fact that he can get himself out of issues with double plays. But Fromber really can't just nibble. He's got to challenge a few more hitters. 1.13. Okay, that's yeah. not terrible. That's not terrible. No, not it's terrible actually better year. than it was the year before. Or the year before. Yeah. So, I've but he had a three, four, five ERA. But the, problem the year is, before, when he was seventeen and six, he was getting out of jams. No, he didn't give up home runs. Go look. He gave up seven for the year. What did he give up last year? A lot more home runs. You can walk. You can walk and let men on base if you're not giving up home runs. He gave up home runs last year. That was the big difference. He gave up seven the year before. Last year, he got smacked around with home runs. Nineteen. Yeah, I mean that's that's the difference is almost three times. Eleven eleven the year before and twelve the year before that. So yeah. Um no, he he needs to yeah, well, and he's a sinker ball pitcher. Hey, listen, in game one, he got himself out of jams with double plays, it seemed like every inning until he didn't. And you can't it, rely on that. No, you can't. It'll get you eventually. It did get him eventually. And it's gotten him plenty. It's gotten him plenty. He he always, even his great year when he set the record for most quality complete start, quality starts, he still had a lot of games where he gave up a three spot in one inning and then shut him down the rest of the innings. He, he tends to have one inning where he blows up. Well, you know, you can't, I mean, you can't live like that. And he couldn't live like that last year and, and it cost him. Uh, and it cost him in game one. I'm I'm concerned about Fromber, but you know what? With JV coming back after throwing 52 pitches, um, you know we don't have to depend on Fromber being the ace this year. If if he's back and if Javier pitches the way that he did in his first game, you know Javier needs to step up a big time too uh, this year. So I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not worried about this season. I am a little worried about Fromber though. He doesn't look like the same guy. That he was in when he was when he was a, yeah, a Cy Young gonna, contender. That's going to be the key. I mean, for me, it's all about just throwing more strikes and 
and keeping the ball down. And, you know, he's got to he's got to be willing to throw some fastballs. But if he locates, he's fine. If he locates, he's fine. He just can't afford to get himself. I mean, you can't walk six batters. No. You, you, you can't do that. He's not going to get – he's not a guy who's going to get raked all over the yard. But if you are getting people – if people are getting on base through walks – all of a sudden, those home runs, you, you give up a few more home runs, they turn into three-run homers. You know, he gave up seven. That was incredible. 25, 26, whatever it was, consecutive uh, um, quality starts. That's really, you know, it used to be quality starts. We kind of make fun of that because there's not much you had to do. We thought six innings, three runs, that's a 4.5 ERA. Now, getting to six innings is no guarantee for any pitcher. And so what Fromber did was really incredible. And but but it was in large part because he didn't give up home runs. And he's going to walk some people he doesn't like to give in, and that's admirable. Some of the best pitchers of all time didn't like to give in and let you, you know, some of the pitchers we think of like Smoltz, Glav, and Maddox. Those those teams were famous for not giving it like you're not going to get a hitter's pitch. The difference is though, you've got to well, A, the strike zones are tighter now than they used to be. And then B, you just every once in a while you have to learn how to make a two strike pitch or a three ball pitch so that you put the ball in play and give your defense a chance because you can't keep walking this many because these home runs are going to get you. 26 in a row, but he had a lot of them. Two earned runs, three earned runs, two, one, two, three, 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 two, 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 three, three, two, two. two. He had a lot of outings where he gave up that th- right at three and six innings pitched. Yeah. And seven innings pitched. So uh, he did. He had a lot of uh, big innings that he had given up. You're right. Now you put runners on with walks, and it's just as a kid. Now now those uh, you're, you're having multiple big innings as opposed to just one that he was doing before. Chris has got a, a church story. What do you say, Chris? Good morning, guys. I've got a uh, once-in-a-lifetime church story. Um, my best friend growing up, his grandfather was a uh, preacher, and his, his grandfather passed away, and I was a freshman in college. I came down to attend the service in a little small town, and when I arrived, of course, the, the church was packed, and I was the only uh, you know, white guy in the whole place. What I didn't realize is that every minister in the whole county showed up to uh, give a sermon and so this thing was lasting for hours and hours. And then finally this one guy came up, and right off the bat, he stood up and looked dead at me and said, Son, you've been sinning. You've not been doing right. <clears throat> you know, Reverend Hawkins went to heaven because he lived a righteous life, but you are not living a righteous life. And he grabbed a chair, put it center stage, and says, Now's the time. You need to come up and accept Jesus Christ in front of everybody right here today. <laughs> and I was shocked, of course. Um, and, uh, but this guy would not give in. He kept going and going. It's probably about 20 minutes, just looking dead at me, trying to get me to come up on stage. And, you know, me and my friend joke for years now that this guy was out to make himself a legend. Cause if he could get the scrawny white boy to come up and profess his love for Jesus right in front of the crowd, he would go down in history. But, uh, finally, uh, he wore out. I didn't go up, but, uh, you know, I joked with my friend, you know, I, I had a, I had a thought of going up there like Blues Brothers style, maybe doing a couple of cartwheels or something, you know. <laughs> so maybe I could go down in history yeah, instead of the minister. But, uh, yeah, chair waiting for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it was a battle of wills, and uh, finally he gave in. But uh, it was quite the experience. Why didn't you – why didn't you uh, – why don't you love Jesus? Why didn't you go up and, <laughs> and, and accept Jesus as well, your you know, Lord and I Savior? <laughs> huh? Yeah, I was not quite as bold back in those days because as I am no. now. So you know, you would have yeah, done it today. Yeah. You you do it right right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today, absolutely, man. Yeah. I you know I wouldn't hesitate. You know, but you know, being nineteen, I, I you know I just didn't have it. You know. Yeah. Well. Sharon, distinctive in supernatural capacity, superlative in sovereign majesty. Exclusive in spiritual beauty, He's got bars. radiant in eternal splendor, matchless in supernal deity. Woo! He's the God of gods. He's the Prince of princes. He's the Pharisee of ten thousand. He's the bright and the morning star. Is there anybody here who knows my Jesus? Is there anybody here who knows my Lord? If the Lord. Open doors.
love for you. Come on, help me praise it. Help I me. Love that. Love that. The play That's go. not the experience I got, but I love that. You got to find that. one yeah. this Sunday. Instead of, can we do a tour? Can we follow you around? A black church tour? tour? black churches Ooh, in the city? make it a Netflix special. If we want, if we want, hey, like I someone like, feed I Phil, look like someone, everybody else there. Nah, it'll be different for you. No. You ever seen that show? There's someone feed Phil or we whatever. Need Phil is hungry. We need no. Lance. No, you. You. No, you've he, already started. I it. don't stand out there. Yes, yeah. you do. <laughs> no, gray beard. You stand out. Oh no, there were a lot of gray. Although beard. you got it trimmed up a little 